popular cake at the moment is the drip cake. So I thought I would use this week's video to show you how I made this really pretty purple and pink buttercream cake, which has these really pretty drips, which is all covered in sprinkles. Also, don't forget if you like this video tutorial, you can subscribe to the Cakes by Ninja YouTube channel for more videos like this. You can also hit that notification bell next to the subscribe button and this will just alert you every time a new video is uploaded. Okay, let's get started. Okay, so in order to make my drip cake, I've just got four layers of vanilla sponge cake and these just measure six inches in diameter. Now, each cake is around an inch in height. I've also got a batch of vanilla buttercream and I will put a link in the description below if you want the recipe to how I made this. So all I'm gonna do to start is just fill my cake with the vanilla buttercream and just apply a crumb coat around the edge. Now a crumb coat is just a thin layer of buttercream which just locks any loose crumbs in. Now you don't want your crumb coat too thick so I'm just going to go in with my metal scrapers. Now when you are covering your cake in your crumb coat you just want to make sure that you're filling all those gaps between your cake layers so that there are no air bubbles and just scrape some of that buttercream off so you're left with around a millimeter of buttercream around the edge. I'm then going to pop this in the fridge for around 15 minutes just for this first crumb coat just to harden slightly so we can add another coat of our buttercream. Okay so I've taken my cake with the crumb coat out of the fridge and I'm just going to apply another layer of buttercream and I've also coloured a small amount in pink so what I'm going to do is have most of the cake in the lighter colour so that we can see the drips coming down and I'm just going to add some of the pink at the bottom just to match some of my sprinkles that I'm going to be adding to the cake. Once we've got our cake covered in our coating of buttercream, I'm just gonna take some of my pink buttercream and just using my offset spatula, I'm just gonna pop a small amount of that pink over the top. And I'm just then gonna go back in with my metal scraper and just scrape this pink all the way around the cake. Okay, so once your pink has been smoothed off, you're left with something that looks like this. So the next thing that I'm gonna do is add some sprinkles to the bottom. And I'm just gonna take some of these on a spoon or just using my hand and I'm just gonna push them just about an inch up so we get a nice border around the bottom. Now I don't want them too straight so I just want a nice higgledy piggledy band. Now I'm adding my sprinkles on before I put this in the fridge to chill just so that my sprinkles will stick to that buttercream. Now I'm putting on as many sprinkles as I can with the spoon and then any that fall onto the board, I'm just using the bottom of my hand just to push those against the buttercream. Okay, so now we've got that nice sprinkle border at the bottom of our cake and I've cleared away all the excess sprinkles. I'm just gonna pop this in the fridge for around half an hour just for that buttercream to completely firm up so that we'll be able to add our colored drip. Okay, so now for the fun part, adding the drip to our cake. Now we have lots of different options for adding the drip. The first one is if you wanted a pure white drip or a colored drip, you could use royal icing. Now you can color royal icing with gel colors so you can get it the exact color you want. Alternatively, you could use candy melts. Now these are already colored. So here we've got some pink ones. So you could melt these down and add these to your cake. Sometimes these can be slightly thick, so you might wanna add some vegetable oil to those just to thin them out. Another alternative option is to create some chocolate ganache. Now, you've got different options. You could either make it milk chocolate or dark chocolate, so you get this nice dark color, or you could create a white chocolate ganache. Now, with your white chocolate ganache, we can color this. Now, you can't add water-based colors to chocolate. So, this is your kind of gel colors or your liquid food food colorings. These all contain water and when added to chocolate can make it go crumbly and you'll notice that it will stop flowing as normal chocolate would. So the best thing to color white chocolate is either to use an oil-based food color 
or to color it with edible tints. Now, these are just edible powdered tints that you would use if you were dusting onto flowers, for example. So this is the method that I'm gonna use on this cake. So I've just got some white chocolate here, which I've broken down into smaller pieces and some double cream. And I'm just gonna create a thin ganache to use for those drips. Now, if you're making milk chocolate or dark chocolate ganache, you want a ratio of one to one. So for 100 grams of chocolate, you would need 100 ml of cream. Now for the white chocolate, I'm just gonna use 150 grams of chocolate to 100 ml of my double cream. So I'm gonna go ahead and heat up my double cream until it's boiling and add it to my chocolate. Now, once they're all combined, you're left with this nice runny mixture, which will make the perfect drip. So the next thing to do is color this. I'm gonna create a purple drip just to match some of those sprinkles. So I'm gonna take this grape violet powder color and just add some of that. Now, I'm also just gonna add a small hint of pink and a tiny amount of blue, just with that purple just to bring that shade out. So once that ganache is colored, I'm just gonna leave that to one side just until it gets to room temperature. So we still want it at a nice drip consistency, but it's not gonna melt that buttercream when we apply it to the cake. Now, if your ganache does start to set because you've left it for a bit too long, you can just pop it in the microwave for an interval of around 10 seconds just to melt slightly and become this nice runny consistency. Okay, so I've just taken my cake out of the fridge and as you can see, the buttercream has just firmed up to the touch. So I've just got an eight inch drum board here, which I've just covered with some white icing. And I'm just gonna first transfer my cake onto my board. I'm then just gonna take a piping bag and just pop that into a glass. I can then pop my purple chocolate ganache into my piping bag. Now I'm just gonna cut the end, so around five millimeters from the bottom. I can then start applying the drips onto my cake. Now for your drip cakes, you can completely cover the top and go down the sides. For this one, I'm just gonna go around the edge about a centimeter in, just because I will be putting some buttercream decorations on the top and adding some sprinkles. Okay, so for the drip, I'm just gonna start around my top edge. I'm then gonna go in with my piping bag and just place that on the edge of my cake, just applying pressure to the bag, but stopping when my drips are around an inch in length. They can then drip further down the cake. I'm just spacing my drips about a centimeter apart. Now, once those drips have started to dry, I'm just gonna go back in with some of my sprinkles and just using a pair of tweezers, I'm just gonna add some of those sprinkles onto those drips. And I'm just gonna work my way all the way around. this cake off with is some buttercream swirls on the top. I've just got some pink buttercream that matches buttercream that we added onto the cake. I've then just got a 6B piping tip. Now this one just has this open star end. I'm going to create a continuous swirl going all the way around so you get this nice board up. So I'm just going to fill my piping bag with my buttercream. What I'm going to do is choose a position on the cake to start with and just as you would pipe a rosette on a cupcake. So starting from the center, working my way out. Just doing one rotation to create a swirl. I'm then gonna move the cake around slightly and continue. So I'm creating a new swirl every time that they're all joined together. Now, if you need to stop piping, make sure that your piping tip is at the bottom. And this just means that you can continue from that position. And for the last one, I'm just gonna come round and tuck it underneath the first rosette that we created. I can then cover my rosettes in some more of my sprinkles. So here we have our finished cake, which is covered in sprinkles, a nice purple drip, and our buttercream swirls. 
I really hope you've enjoyed this video tutorial. If you have, then don't forget to give this video a like. And if you haven't already, you can subscribe to the Cakes by Lens YouTube channel. I'll also put a link in the description below to all my social media and a link where you can find all the tools that I used in today's video. So until next time, bye.